All right, welcome back. Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to work with the normals on these scattered points here. And what we need to do is we need to create a direction for the branches. So, you know, if you've ever you know, looked at a lot of trees and stuff like that, um, you'll notice that the branches at the bottom kind of tend to droop down a little bit. And as they get younger and younger, they, they kind of still have a lot of strength to them. And so they start to fan out. And so we want to create this kind of fanning type of uh, look to it. So uh, the other thing that we also need to take care of is the way that the branches kind of uh, grow in this spiral kind of fashion around the tree. So um, as they grow out, they kind of spiral out from the trunk. All right. So we need to create those two types of interactions there. Okay. So um, let's get started. Um, let's go and drop down an attribute wrangle node. And there we go. Attribute wrangle. There we go. Okay, um, and let's name these. So this one is going to be uh, reverse normals, and this one's going to be uh, branch normal directions. Okay, all right, so let's turn this guy on. And the thing I want to do now is I want to create that gradient value because um, if you're familiar, what we're going to do uh, here, let me actually explain a little bit better. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the sine and cosine values. Uh, first to create that spiral action. So I just want to create some flat normals that just basically spiral around and let us control uh, the spiraling action. So um, let's actually quick take a quick second here and just uh, take a look at that for those who aren't necessarily familiar with the sine and cosine. All right, so now let's drop down a line here. Okay, and this line is going to be, um, we can do it in the y direction, that actually would probably be better. All right, so let's just add a whole bunch more points to it. And let's come into the attribute wrangle node that we created. Again, this is just a test here that we're going to do. I, I really want to just show what sine and cosine does. All right, so what we want to do is we want to create that gradient value. I need a value that goes from 0 to 1, all right, because what I'm looking for is a way to um, pull out the rotation values. And now the sine and cosine value will return for me a value of 1 to negative 1. It basically creates this kind of uh, sine wave, all right? It just creates a wave, all right? Um, so to do that, remember, we can create that gradient value. Now, I have a preset for it, all right? So there's the gradient preset, okay? But let's just type it one more time, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say f at gradient um, is equal to that at pt num, so the current point number, divided by our number of points, minus 1. All right, and that will give us that float value. Okay, and again, I want to be able to cast it. All right, so let's create the cast. There we go. And there we go. All right, so now if we take a look down in our geometry spreadsheet, we have a value from 0 to 1. This is perfect because we can feed that value into a sine function. All right, so let's say at p uh, plus equals our sine. You can see it comes up right there. And we'll just pass in the at gradient like so. And you can see that we're starting to get the beginning of that curve. Okay. And let's actually just do one direction. So right now the reason why it's facing off in the positive value is because we're adding on to this vector. So we're adding on that value to each component in the vector in the x and the y and the z. Let's just do the x for now. So we can see this in action. All right, so we're getting the beginning of that curve. All right, so if I were to do something like uh, times CHFs or a float channel, and we're going to say um, offset, not offset, it's amplitude, frequency. That's what it is. We'll call it frequency, like so, and then change that. You can see that now as I start to add more frequency to it, we get more and more of that wave function in there. Okay, so if I were to add more points here, we'll get a smoother curve. So we're getting that higher frequency now. All right, and then you can go and you can multiply that value by some other value. So we can call this, you know, global FREQ for global frequency. And we'll just do that. 
and there we go. So now we can control, control the what they call amplitude. So we should actually, let's just rename that to amplitude. And let's go and, um, well, we'll leave that for now. So there's our amplitude, and here's our frequency. Okay, so that's what that does. And it, it goes the same for the uh, cosine as well. So if we were to do the same thing, let's do this like so, and in the z direction, so let's say dot z, and instead of the sine, we'll do the cosine. All right, so you can see now we're getting a spiral. Okay, so that's how you would create uh, a spring. Now we can actually just control the length of this. Now we have a spring. Okay, so that's the basics behind the sine and cosine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we apply that then to normals. All right, we went and adjusted the x and the z positions of the points on that last line in that test. All right. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually apply the same theory or concept to the normals as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in my gradient. All right, that way I don't have to type it again. That's why those things are really useful. All right. And what I want to do now is I want to just adjust the normals in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a float value. And this is going to be called our x pause. And our x pause is going to be equal to the sine of our gradient. Let's just start there. All right. And then our float uh, z pause is going to be equal to the cosine of our gradient. Like that. Very cool. OK? So with that done, what we can do is then just pass that into the normal. OK, so let's go and just set our at n dot x to equal the x pause. All right, so instead of the at p, or the position of the point, we're just affecting the normal now. And now we're going to say at n dot z is equal to our z pause. There we go. Let's take a look. And now you can see that we're starting to get a little bit of value there. Uh, but the, the crazy thing is that we don't have an ordered set of points. So let's take a look at our point numbers. You can see that our points um, aren't ordered, which is why we're getting this weird effect. We want it actually to spiral from the bottom to the top. And right now it's kind of random, which might actually be what you want. Uh, let's go first before we go and fix that, or at least I'll show you how to fix that. Um, let's create a float, and we'll call this um, float the rotation amount. And we're going to equal that to a float channel. And we'll call that the rotation amount. All right. So then what we'll do is we'll multiply that by the rotation amount. We'll just copy that and do the same for the z, so we get the same effect on the other end. And we'll create the, that parameter. And now if we take a look here, and you can see that we're spiraling around. Now that might be you know, perfectly valid solution to what you're looking for. Okay, um, But if, I, if you do want more of an ordered kind of point control, or control over the normals there, so you get a spiral starting from the bottom and going to the top, uh, what we need to do is we need to do a sort. So I'm going to drop down a sort node here. Okay. And uh, what we can do is play around with the, the different settings here. All right. So the point sort, I'm going to do uh, by Y. And you'll notice now we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Perfect. And that's because it's checking the Y direction. Who's ever at the bottom is going to be 0. And as you get to the top, or if your y is the greatest, you're going to be the last point in that list. Okay, so that takes care of that. And if we now take a look at our solution here, you can see that we're getting an actual spiraling rotation. So I do it really slowly. You can see now we're spiraling around. And if you overpower it, you know, you get this kind of natural looking spiraling effect. All right. So that's cool. So now what I want to do is I want to control the y direction. You notice they're all pointing in that same direction. They have the same y value. And, you know, again, that might be what you're after, but I actually want to add some control to that. Okay, so um, let's put in a little bit of information for ourselves. I'm going to put in a comment here, and we'll just call this the um, x and z 
uh, normal positions. Okay, and then what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to uh, build a Y position. All right, so this Y position is going to be a float value. All right, so we'll just call this the Y pause. And this is going to be equal to a ramp. All right, and I'm going to feed in that gradient value like so. All right, so let's go and, and I need to give it a name. That's why that's complaining. All right, so this is going to be called our Y pause. There we go. All right, and we'll just create that parameter. And what I want to do now is put in another line that says at n dot y is equal to our y pause, like so. And you can see now, as they start at the bottom, the branch is really flat. And as they get to the top, they're pointed up more. All right, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So now I can overpower the top value here, like so. All right, and we can make a negative value for the bottom to get those bottom ones to droop. Very cool. But you'll notice that uh, our normals, as they get overpowered by this value up here, uh, that they are, are actually greater than a length of one. And really, you want to keep those values normalized. So at the very bottom here, let's say at n is equal to normalize at n, like so. And that'll keep them at their normalized lengths. Awesome. So we're doing pretty good here now. So now we've got the directions for all these. And if we were to go and place a line on these, so let's uh, just create another line. This will become our branch line. Like so. All right. And we did a copy to points. Let's do a copy to points. There you are. All right. We pass that into the point or the primitive to copy and the points to copy two. you can see that we are getting a weird result there because we need this direction to point in the Z direction. All right? Anytime you use that copy to points there, you need that Z direction or the, the line needs to, or the object that you're copying onto the points needs to be pointed in that forward direction, the Z direction. All right, so now we have our points, but you notice that they're being scaled, so uh, there must be an empty P scale on this or something somewhere. Let's turn off all these values here so we can take a look. You can see that the line is getting scaled from top to bottom, and that is not what I'm wanting. We can say that the at P scale is equal to one. Let's see if that takes care of it, and in fact it does. So there were some P scale values left on that particular branch. Let's actually comment that out and take a look here again in the yep, in the geometry spreadsheet. So that's one way you could do it. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, if you want to do it the clean way, what I do is do an attribute, um, attribute delete. There we go, just to get rid of it. So what we can do is turn that on, go to our point attributes here, and get rid of that P scale and the, the gradient because we're creating it again. So that cleans it all up. So now we don't have to put that in there. So now as I add more branches to this, or more points using our resample node here, you can see that we're getting something pretty cool. All right, we can go back into our branch normal directions and change the amount of rotation again. So just pump it up even more and we have something that is starting to look like a tree. So if we were to merge in the, the trunk here now, so let's get the final result of that sweep for the trunk. We're starting to get something that's kind of like a tree. All right, well, we're obviously going to make it more like a tree. <laughs> so I'm going to close out the video there now that we've got most of that work done. All right, and what we're going to do is move on and start to take care of the branch. All right, we need to do a little bit more work on the branch itself, the branch line. Okay, thanks so much.